Hello, friend. It's episode 367 of the Keto Diet Podcast. My name is Leanne Vogel. I blog over at healthfulpursuit.com. I'm a functional blood chemistry specialist, holistic nutritionist, and I am in love with today's episode. Do I say that every week? I don't know. It's good. If you host a show and you really love the content you create, I think that's probably a good sign. So we're chatting today with Kristen Accord. She's a grandmother in her late 40s, 49 to be exact, and she's been on a weight loss journey since around her 20s. She's lost 100 pounds twice in smaller amounts, multiple times, doing almost every diet out there at some point. And she's currently focused on healing health and longevity over weight loss alone. She's a huge research nerd and her story is so incredibly encouraging for those that have experienced just feeling down and out with their diet and not knowing where to turn. She's so open and honest with her experience. She's now a certified in Keto Mastery from Ketogenic.com. She's starting up her coaching practice because of the experiences that she's had. We talk about where her weight gain started, what her weight loss journey has been like for most of her life, the craziest diet she's been on, what she means by when life happens, you know, when you start a diet and you lose the weight, you get to your goal weight and then life happens. And before you know it, you're back up or even higher than you were previously. How to set targets for weight loss that are healthy focused, overcoming fatty liver disease, getting diagnosed with statins, high blood pressure medication. I mean, the list goes on. This woman is so incredibly inspiring. And I don't even think she knows how inspiring she is, which makes it even more so of just being open and honest and raw with where she is now, where she's come, what her goals are. It's an incredible episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. We talk about two resources today, the obesity code book, which I really enjoyed. So I'll link that up in the show notes. And then episode 116, we had Ryan Lowry on the show. He is one of the creators, I believe, of of Keto Mastery at ketogenic.com. So really cool stuff. If you want to listen to him, uh, you can rewind back to episode 116. I'll have details in the show notes. And as always, if you have questions for me, you can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me and you can catch up on previous podcast episodes and notes and links and things by going to ketodietpodcast.com. Okay, let's do this thing. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones, and heal your body. Starting and maintaining keto can be challenging without the right support. So just for listening to the podcast, I want to give you 20% off the keto beginning with the coupon code Keto Podcast. That's all one word. This 30-day program gives you a clear step-by-step how-to so you can quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles, and get the results you crave. Go to health healthfulpursuit.com slash begin to get your keto beginning discount today. If you're new around these parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international bestselling author of The Keto Diet, founder of happyketobody.com, or maybe you know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks so much for listening. Hey, Kristen, how are you? I am good. How are you today? I'm so good. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm expecting this to be a blast. Oh, oh. (laughs) high expectations. Let's do this. Well, let's start off by you telling us a little bit about yourself. Oh, absolutely. Well, my name is Kristen. Just like you said, I am a woman in my 40s. I'm a mother and a grandmother. I have been on a weight loss journey for most of my life, not all of my life. Started in my 20s. I've done the typical everything out there diet, (laughs) lost weight many, many times only to gain it all back. I've lost a hundred pounds twice actually in my life. So that's been fun. I um, have been keto since 2017 now. I'm a firm believer in it. I believe that it works. Although I'm having some troubles with it now, I believe that it works. And that's where I'm at right now. (laughs) That's amazing. There's so much in there that I have questions about. I think the first one is really, you say that you've been on a weight loss journey most of your life. What's like the craziest thing that you've done that you're like, why did I even do that? (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I actually have three of those. One is, I don't know if you remember way back in the day, the cabbage soup diet, which was just insane. You basically ate soup three times a day for several days. It was horrible on your digestive system. That was probably the craziest thing. The other one was my own made up thing. I did my own made up crazy diet. I was like, I'm going to eat turkey sandwich on wheat bread with only mustard. And I'm going to count out Fritos of all things to exactly one serving. And that's what I ate two meals a day. I ate a half grapefruit for breakfast, my weird turkey sandwich and chips for lunch and dinner. And I have no idea where that came from. It was in my head this is what I'm going to do. And I did it for a long time. <laughs> so, And the third one, I'll talk about a little bit more. I kind of did my own Biggest Loser style weight loss thing. And that was, whew. Wow. <laughs> that yeah. sandwich thing. That's fantastic. I mean, it's funny because like looking back, we're like, what were we thinking? But in the moment, it sounds and feels like such a great idea. So, <laughs> so like exactly no judgment. I've been there too. I think I did a form of the cabbage soup diet. It had like the cabbage soup, but every day there was like a theme. So you do the cabbage soup, but like on day five, it was bananas with milk and day six, it was just ground beef. And day seven, it was something, but you could also have the cabbage soup. I mean, what? Like, yes, <laughs> you could have as much cabbage soup as you wanted. Oh, it, was, it was funny. Yeah, super fun. Okay, cool. And isn't that incredible? And so you were saying that you lost 100 pounds twice. Yes. Tell us more about that. I will. So in 2009, actually, this is my biggest loser story. I actually tried out for the show Biggest Loser and I didn't make it on the show, obviously. Very glad I didn't now looking back on it. But at the time I was devastated. And I remember sitting at the table with these other people auditioning and everybody just had great stories about why they had gained weight. And I know that sounds horrible, a great story about why you gained weight, but you know, there was tragedy, there was, you know, loss of life, there was house fires, I just sat there and I listened to all these stories. And it got to me and I'm like, I'm just a soccer mom that got fat, you know, I don't have a great story about this. And so I didn't get on the show. And I came home determined to do my own thing. And I found a trainer I did. And it took me almost two years, about a year and a half to lose the 100 pounds. But I was doing the typical exercise one to two hours a day, 12 to 1500 calories. I mean, everything you see them do on Biggest Loser, I was doing as much as I could at home. And I lost 100 pounds. And I kept it off for about a year. But of course, life happens. And I gained 120 something back. And then in 2017, when I started keto, it took me about another two years to get that back off. And I lost 120 pounds between 2017 17 and 2019. So I've actually done that twice. <laughs> the second time I do feel like I did it a much healthier way. I, um, I hope to keep it off this time. I am back up some now, but that's not diet related. That's more health related. So. Wow. Wow. And something that you said that I really want to point out, can we talk a little bit about when you say life happens, like you worked so hard and I mean, it takes a lot of dedication. I don't need to tell you that to just like change your lifestyle, change your food, have difficult conversations. I'm sure with your friends and family about, I can't eat that. Like I choose not to eat that. And so when you had lost the weight originally and you say life happens, can you take us through what that is? Cause I'm sure there are so many women listening that are like, ah, oh, that's me. Life happens. Can we just talk a little bit about what that was for you? Absolutely. I am. Um, so I'm a mother of three daughters and I was a stay at home mom for most of that. And I had a lot of pressure on myself for what that family environment should look like. So when my kids made choices were just completely against everything I thought they should do. They weren't horrible. You know, my kids are fine now talking about them <laughs> on this podcast. They're going to hear this. They're all doing great now and wonderful. But at the time we went through a lot of struggles and they all made choices that I didn't think were the best for them. So in my mind, I was a failure as a mom and I let that guilt and shame take over. And I looked around and 
the comfort out there was food and there was nothing else that I felt like would comfort me. Exercise wasn't doing it anymore. You know, restricting my food wasn't doing it anymore. So in order to make myself feel better, I just gave up on myself. And that's such a dumb thing to say, but that's literally what my mind was thinking at the time. It's like, well, I'm not good enough for this. So I'm not good enough to eat right and take care of myself. So I'm just going to sit on the couch and eat. And I remember having those thoughts of, well, I just don't care if I get fat anymore. I don't care if I'm unhealthy. I can't do anything right. I have failed at the one thing I wanted to do well at. So here we are. And that sounds a little dramatic, I know, but that's, you know, as a mom, so many of us put that pressure on ourselves that our kids have to be a certain way or we have failed. I have since learned that lesson that, you know, my kids' choices are theirs' choices. They're not necessarily a reflection of me, but at the time that was a huge, huge struggle for me. In these crazy times we're in, stress and anxiety are at an all-time high. You know, I wonder if everyone in every generation has said that. While there are many great natural supplements to support anxiety and stress, the one that's helped me the most is CBD oil. CBD has tons of other benefits as well, such as sleep support, clearing acne, reducing inflammation, and so much more. By now, everyone's heard of CBD oil. While some people swear by it, other people have have not seen the results that they were hoping for, and this bums me out big time. That's where Eaton Hemp comes in. Their unfiltered USDA certified organic full spectrum CBD oil is minimally processed and infused in their own hemp seed oil, giving you the full entourage effect, maximum absorption, potency, effectiveness, which means results. Whether you place the tincture under your tongue or use the salve on sore muscles, that's my personal favorite, CBD can and should work for you. And if it's not, you're not using the right product. Not only does Eaton provide one of the cleanest CBD products on the market today, but they pride themselves on transparency. Eaton Hemp is farmer owned and strongly believes in whole plant nutrition. That's why they leave the CBD unfiltered so all the elements of the hemp plant can work in unison. Eaton Hemp is so confident in the results that their CBD will give you that they offer a full 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't satisfied with their product, they're going to refund you with no questions asked. As a special podcast only offer, you can save 25% on all Eaton Hemp products and still get your full money back guarantee. Head on over to eatonhemp.com slash keto diet. Use a code keto diet at checkout. Again, that's eatonhemp.com slash keto diet and use the code keto diet for 25% off. Wow. And I've heard so many women express that of, and oftentimes we'll always say, it sounds so dumb to say, but I just didn't <laughs> value it. We always start off that way. And I mean, I don't know of a client that I've worked with in the last 14 years that hasn't said some form of that. I've just, I didn't value myself and it just, it went sideways and I didn't care. I think that's the biggest thing. And when we don't care and we don't have that value and we're seeking comfort in food, let's fast forward to now. You said something really interesting of like, you just used food to comfort. How do you comfort yourself now? Like, let's fast forward and just talk about comfort and then we'll backtrack because I have a couple more questions on your path. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, now I have learned that I love to research things. So now I listen to podcasts. I take a walk. I read a book. I joined the Keto Mastery Program in 2021 and did a lot of research for that and ended up passing and becoming a Keto Mastery Certified. So now my comfort is kind of in just filling my brain with all the things out there. I really, really enjoy researching and learning. So that's my comfort now. Thank goodness. <laughs> wow. That's so great. Filling your brain and also knowing, you know, empowering yourself really, it sounds like to when somebody comes at you with, you should try this cabbage soup diet. You're like, nope. And I know why, <laughs> you know, like 
you have the knowledge. Do you feel that way? Like empowered to make better choices? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's made a world of difference in my mind. When I eat something now, it's not, if it is off plan or if, you know, whatever the situation may be, it's not, I'm eating this to make myself feel better. You know, it's, I'm choosing to eat this because this is the situation I'm in right now, whether it be a celebration or out to dinner with my husband or whatever, you know, the situation might be, it's no longer, I'm doing this to make myself feel better. Yep, completely. Okay, so losing 100 pounds twice, going through all of that, we've chatted a little bit about that. What are some of the biggest mistakes that like, if you could go back and there's maybe a lady listening right now that's lost 100 pounds twice, three times? I mean, there are many, many women who have experienced this. What are some of the things that you wish you could have told yourself during that time? Oh, gosh, the biggest one would be it doesn't have to be fast. And I think that's a struggle for all of us when we're trying to lose weight. You know, we want it to go just so fast and it doesn't have to go fast to slow down and to think about what you're eating. Also now I know I'm more worried about my health, my longevity, my mobility. Weight loss is great. You know, I want people to lose weight if they want to lose weight. I still have a little bit of weight I want to lose myself. So weight loss is great. I'm not saying not to focus on weight loss, but I think there are so many other other more important things than just the number on the scale. You know, how do your clothes fit? Do you wake up feeling energized? Things like that to me now are more important than just what the scale says. And also not to let other people's perception of you factor into that. And this kind of not really weight loss related, but my kid's story related. It's always what you think other people are going to think about you. And that just should be way down on the list for us, even though we keep it at the top of the list sometimes. So those are the three things I think I would go back and say, slow down. (laughs) Don't worry about what other people think of you and worry less about what the scale says and more about how you feel. That's such great advice. And the slow down thing we live in a society and we all know this and we, we all do it. We want that instant gratification of I ate so well today and the scale is not reflecting what I did yesterday and the same work that I'm doing now on root cause work. You know, we expect, I took herbs for 30 days and all I have is just a little bit better hair volume, (laughs) you know, like it does, it takes time. It takes so much time. And yeah, I think that's such great advice to just slow down and be patient. And I think you being informed, I'm sure helps so much of just like, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. This is an expectation of that I can have that's realistic. So from the cabbage soup and the sandwiches, biggest loser, what made you attracted to keto and what kind of grabbed your attention first off with that? Well, it's funny in 2017, when I had started this weight loss journey, I was very, very sick. I had, you know, fatty liver disease. I was on high blood pressure medicines. The doctor wanted me to be on statins. I was kind of afraid of them. So I wouldn't take them, but the doctor wanted me on them. I had severe, severe GERD. I was pre-diabetic. I was just, I had grandkids by this point and I couldn't play with them like I wanted to. I just felt terrible. And I was actually in the process of having a sleeve surgery done. I was going through the, they put you through classes, nutritional classes, things like that. And I was going through all that and it just didn't sit well with me. And the more I went through it, the more I knew this wasn't really for me. And so in my research of just like, what am I going to do? You know, I I had done South Beach in the past. So I had kind of been familiar with low carb and just do fun and read his book, Obesity Code, which was absolutely life-changing. And then I found you and your book and your podcast and then Maria Emmerich. And so I had those three big names in my pocket and just said, okay, I'm going to try this. And if this doesn't work, I'll go back, you know, for the sleeve surgery. But if this works, then this is, this is what we'll do. And within, it was less than four months, probably three and a half months. I had reversed almost every single one of those conditions. I was no longer pre-diabetic. My liver enzymes were great on blood work. You know, my GERD did take a little more time. It wasn't just keto that healed that. I had to do some digestive enzymes and things like that. But yeah, just in a couple of months, 
all of those things were reversed. Wow. 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 Okay. Wow. There's a question that I have that I'm sure some women listening are thinking you're sitting in your doctor's office. Your doctor's saying you have fatty liver disease. You need to go on statins. I'm sure there was a whole list of things you need to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. What was it like? Did you say no to the doctors? Like at what point were you like, wait a minute, I can do this. What was that like? Do you remember? Well, initially I let the doctor prescribe me everything. I wasn't going to argue with him. You know what I mean? It was kind of, let me just take everything he's saying and I'll go home and think about it and look into it. And I did, I went home and I looked into everything and I was taking the high blood pressure medicine, but like I said, I just, I didn't take the statins. They just worried me. And um, I went back to him and he said, well, your numbers are, you know, you're looking a little, little bit better. What are you doing? And of course I said the keto word because I was excited about it. And he was like, isn't that that high fat diet? You know, I'm not really sure you should do that. And I was like, and I, I just told him, look, I'm feeling better. I'm doing better. Let me do this for a couple of months. We'll come back. We'll check everything. And if you're right, I'll change it. And he agreed. Luckily he agreed. He was like, okay, that's fine. And so did what I did. And when I went back to him, it was somewhere, let's see, I started in March of 2017. So it was somewhere June, July, I went back to the doctor and he ran all my blood work and he actually said to me, okay, whatever you're doing, keep doing. So <laughs> I'm hoping he's a believer now in keto. I don't see the same doctor anymore just because his practice changed. He's still a great guy, but I'm hoping he changed his mind on keto after seeing my results. Wow. And I love that you said, I said that keto word, I made that mistake <laughs> when I first started eating keto and I had a nurse sit me down for like 30 minutes and oh. go through like what I was doing, how dangerous it was with my past, blah, 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 blah. And it's so, it was so hard to sit there. And especially when you don't entirely know if you're doing right. the right thing, you're like, I think I am. But then a medical professional says that you're not, that's yep. like, well, am I, I don't know, maybe my numbers are better because of some other thing. Maybe I should stop. So wow, that you just persevered and you had that confidence. Were you learning at that point about keto or were you just like, I'm going to do this thing? It's both. Yep. I just kind of started when I decided that's what I was going to do. I just went for it. And then as I was going is when I started reading and learning. So I just kind of jumped in feet first and basically cut out everything, you know, bread wise, pasta wise, anything like that. But like I said, reading Dr. Fung's book, OBC code and listening to your podcast. I would at gradually like tweak, okay, maybe I need to do track macros, you know, maybe I need to do that for a little while because I didn't start off tracking and I probably only track maybe the first six weeks just to kind of get a handle of how to eat this way. And then after that, I kind of just let my body decide how much to eat, when to eat, when not to eat. And that was a big thing that I had never had before. Keto was appetite control, just knowing when I was full and when I wanted to eat and when I didn't want to eat. And then I didn't start fasting. I did gradually add in fasting after a couple of months, but it took me several months to start doing that because I wanted to get a real good grip on what to eat before I started not eating. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I think so many of us, like what I'm hearing you say is that it wasn't like all of a sudden night and day, 180 degree shift, like I'm doing this now and hardcore. It sounds like it was gradual using those lessons that you shared earlier about being patient and moving into things gradually. Would you agree with that? 100% agree with that. I was definitely more gradual into this. Like I said, I took steps and just, I'm just going to start cutting things out that I know are, you know, high carb and processed and things like that. And then learning more information. Okay maybe set the macros to a certain degree. And then I would learn a little bit more and okay, maybe just intermittent fast a little bit here. And then so gradually, as I learned, I would add in more things. And then you know, you learn what works, what don't work, what you need to cut back on. So that was way different than anything I had ever done in the past. Completely. And so you approached it differently. Did you also have a different goal at that point? Meaning I know that you mentioned just a little bit ago about being a grandparent and not being able to play with the kiddos. Did that factor into like, I got to get a handle on this. And did that why shift from previous weight loss and really focusing on the scale to something different? Yes, absolutely did. And I remember, you know, because I had all these grandkids that wanted to play and I would get down on the floor and I couldn't enjoy myself. I was uncomfortable. 
home. I couldn't stand back up. Things would hurt. I had no energy and I was babysitting them and I had no energy to play with them or follow them around. And then, you know, you look in their sweet little faces and you think, I don't want to die early. You know, I don't want weight to take me. I don't want something that I don't want to keep weight on me if it's preventing me from enjoying these littles. And I wanted to be able to move and be healthy, heart healthy and liver healthy. And all those issues I said I was having, I knew that they would eventually kill me. And I didn't want that. I wanted to be around for a long time for my grandbaby. So it wasn't, it was lose weight. I did want to lose weight, but there was a deeper reason to wanting to lose that weight instead of just wanting to look cute in my clothes, which is not a bad goal, but (laughs) I had had that goal before, you know, I needed a, a bigger goal this time and being around for my grandkids definitely was the bigger goal. Maybe you've heard of all the amazing things that apple cider vinegar can do for you. If you have not, let's review. It can balance healthy blood sugar, banish cravings, and encourage fat loss. It can improve protein absorption and digestion by helping you break down animal protein so you can use those nutrients more effectively. It can help you stabilize healthy blood sugar, which helps improve energy and mood. It can aid in the healthful aging process. It has been shown to lower morning glucose, fasting glucose, and and help stabilize blood sugar by increasing the ability of our muscles to take up sugar from our blood. Okay, so you could just go to your pantry and chug some apple cider vinegar. No, 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 don't do it. It'll burn your esophagus. (laughs) So you always have to mix it with water. And here's the thing. I don't know about you, but when I have a liquid supplement, I will nine times out of 10 forget to take the stuff. And that's why I love Paleo Valley's apple cider vinegar complex, because not only does it have apple cider vinegar, but it also has turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, lemon, all organic ingredients to further support all the benefits of apple cider vinegar and more. If you are encouraged to take the stuff and you just don't think that you'll drink the liquid, you can head on over to paleovalley.com. And load up on a couple of bottles of apple cider vinegar complex and whatever else that catches your eyes. I personally love the superfood bars. They're just amazing. Enter the code KETO at checkout to receive 15% off your first order. Again, that's paleovalley.com and use the code KETO at checkout for 15% off your first order. Yes, completely. And when you have those like deeper goals, I've had, I've had that I want to look cute in a bathing suit and it Mm -hmm. doesn't really last all that long. (laughs) Like I think because it's just, (laughs) there's no value behind it. There's no relationship behind it. There's no like meaty bits of, I want to be around as long as I possibly can to see my grandkids, you know, like that's, that's a pretty meaty bit. And so it goes, it goes a lot longer, I think in sustaining one's journey. Oh, absolutely because you find out when you want to look cute in the clothes and you get in the clothes that sometimes you don't always feel cute, even though you're the size you wanted to be and you're in the outfit you wanted to be, something still doesn't sit right. Something still doesn't feel right. So, and that's when I think we open our eyes and go, okay, it's got to be something more than this. Yep. I've experienced that. I got down to my goal weight and then I was like, wait, I'm still unhappy and I mm-hmm. don't really like myself. Oh, it wasn't the weight. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, exactly. Darn. Okay. Well, back to the drawing board I go. So you mentioned going back to school and like learning more about keto. At what point, you know, it sounds like you decided to go keto in 2017. At what point were you like, whoa, I want to learn more about this? And what was that transition like for you? I, it's funny. So in 2020, let's see, nope, 2021, we're in 2022 now, right? So 2021 was when I joined Keto Mastery. I'd always, once I lost the weight and reversed those health markers, I knew that I always wanted to help other people do that. That's kind of been in the back of my mind for a long time. I still struggle with the confidence of thinking I can help people do that. So I was looking at different programs to join, to get certified, to have some kind of meat behind my name, if that makes sense. And I came across Ryan Lowry's program, Keto Mastery. I really love what his organization is doing. I love how they approach keto. I love how they're approaching health and longevity, not just weight loss. So that was a big thing for me. And researching their program, I chose to go with his. It took me several, several months to get through it. It is a pretty in-depth 
program, I was, I had done a lot of research on my own. So I was kind of slightly impressed that I knew a lot of the things in there already. I was like, ah, I know that already. So in some ways I was like really proud of myself. And then in other ways it, it kicked my tail and it was really hard and I was glad I did it, but I did graduate just recently actually. So now I can say I'm Kia Mastery certified. I am still, I'm going to step into a little bit of what my health problems are right now, because this is kind of keeping me from jumping wholeheartedly into coaching other people because I'm still trying to figure myself out. I am in menopause and have low T3 now, thyroid. Uh, and that's been causing me to put weight back on. So it's not necessarily keto related or diet related, but it's something I can't seem to get a handle on. I went to the doctor for it. She put me on NP thyroid. I gained weight on NP thyroid. My T3 went down just all kinds of things happen. So <laughs> I'm in this weird space now of, well, you can't figure your own self out. How are you going to coach other people? So I'm trying to, to get through that and not feel like a big imposter. You know, that whole thing where you feel like a fraud, like, well, I'm not, I can't maintain my own weight. How can I help somebody else with theirs? I have ordered the Dutch test. I'm excited about that. I just got it in. Um, so I'm hoping to do that at some point this week and send it in and get a better grip on myself. But I do, I'm hoping to, with all this figuring out my own health stuff, that it'll just give me more information to be able to help women with, hopefully. <laughs> You know, girl, I got to say, somebody who's been in the space for 14 years, currently dealing with mold toxicity, you will never fully figure yourself out. <laughs> like, you know, it's layer after layer. And I think the most beautiful thing, such a gift that we have as practitioners is like the thing that we struggle with most and really dig into personally ends up being such a beautiful fuel to the fire of how we approach uh, work with our clients. And I'm always amazed that the very thing that I've just persevered through and pushed through and researched like left, right, sideways, inside out. It sounds like you have a very similar brain where you're like, I will figure this out. I don't care how long mm -hmm. it takes me. Once you even have a slight idea of what's going on with your body, you'll start attracting so many clients with the same issue, but are like a couple of years behind you. And so it's incredible that we will consistently have issues because we're not going to get perfect bodies the side of heaven. Like it's just, it's not going to happen. There's always going to be issues. And so if there's any bit of encouragement that I could give you or anyone listening, regardless of what space you're in is there's always going to be something and that imposter syndrome. I know I have it too. Like people can be like, yeah, but you've done this, this, this. I'm like, eh, yeah, I don't know. I still don't think I know anything. Like, <laughs> so it, it never, it never goes away. At least not. It hasn't for me. It's definitely gotten better just, you know, through prayer and, you know, just trying to drop that stuff. But yeah, you'll always have something to work on. And the things that you know, you've been equipped to handle certain things. And so starting to work with clients while you're a mess, <laughs> like I am consistently learning something and realizing something about myself where I'm like, oh, I thought I had a good handle on that. Yep. No, I totally don't. So if that's any encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Thank you. I appreciate that. It is weird. And I want to come back to when I've talked about what I would say to my older self in regards to what I'm going through now is I wish I had started looking into this sooner, you know, because I am 49 years old and I waited until things were a problem to like start digging into the research. And I wish I had kind of stepped into this sooner so that now I wasn't trying to correct a problem. I was preventing a problem, but I didn't. So that's where we're at. <laughs> I really hope you're enjoying today's episode. I'd love to see where you're listening from. You can snap a pic and tag me at Leanne Vogel or leave a review for the show on your favorite podcast player. It helps me out tremendously. Okay, back to the good stuff. Yeah, and it's it's so hard, you know. I mean, looking back on my own life, I should have known personally. I mean, we had a water damaged home probably about 
14 years ago now. And I watched my health slowly deteriorate and I thought it was other things. And so, yeah, Mm -hmm. the keto diet helped and all the things that I've done helped, but I was still missing the mark until last year where I was like, are you kidding Leanne? It had to get so bad where I was like, it's mold. And so, I mean, yeah, for most people, it has to get bad until we're like, wait, this is actually an issue. Right. So, yeah. And I think this is now a conversation between two ladies that is probably (laughs) you hear this every friend that you chat with every conversation you have, it usually takes us quote unquote, too long to figure out what the issue is. And the interesting thing you said just about T3, if I can give you like a little tip, if you took NP thyroid and you started gaining weight, check out some information on reverse T3 and whether or not if you did run blood work with your doctor, when you were on the NP thyroid and you saw your reverse T3 increase, that's just because your body didn't want the T3 that was from the NP thyroid. And it was literally converting it into the deactivated reverse T3. When this happens, it's usually due to like excess cortisol issues, stress, root cause stuff would be things like heavy metals, chronic infections. What else? Fasting to too much. And yeah, reverse T3. If you are taking thyroid medication and your body's just converting it over to reverse T3, the body's saying, we do not want T3, usually because it's upregulating the metabolism and the body for some reason does not want the body to be upregulated in metabolism. And then, so then you wonder like, why would the body not want to be upregulated? Like, isn't a fast metabolism a good thing? Well, when we have Mm -hmm. things like infections, heavy metals, those root cause things that can sometimes like play down below and just like hang out the body doesn't want to be upregulated because it would actually cause quite a lot of issues. It's actually your body protecting itself from further damage. So yeah, play around with like some ideas around reverse T3 and also liver mitochondria. So the, the mitochondria in your liver is what creates your hormones. And when you experience menopause, you can have issues there. And you did say, you know, you had fatty liver. So yeah, look up maybe liver mitochondria and use your mastery skills to kind of dig deep if I can give some tips on where to look first. (laughs) Oh, that's absolutely great. I will go back and look. I did do blood work. So I will go back and look at the reverse T3 and you've kind of confirmed the two things that were in my mind to look deeper in. One was liver and one is the cortisol, which is why I ordered the Dutch test because I want to look at that. I do believe I probably did too much fasting and, and I've had some real major stressful events in 2019 and 2020, not having anything to do with COVID or the pandemic just in my own personal life. And so I feel like cortisol, stress, liver, things like that, those were already on my mind as potential reasons. So you've kind of confirmed that that I'm in a good direction. So thank you for that. (laughs) Oh, you're so welcome. And it's so interesting when you start to kind of break down like where the adrenals kind of factor into things and understanding that when the mitochondria are off, the adrenals are off, then you have a stressful situation. And then it just cascades into this nightmare thing. And then and, you know, if you experienced this in 2009, 2020, your body's had like two years to kind of settle into this adrenal funky place. And so then mm-hmm. you start thinking like, what else is going on? It can get super complicated, but I love, I love that you're doing a Dutch. That's so great. And oh, you're going to have so much data from that. <laughs> I'm actually really excited about it. <laughs> That's how, you know, you're a research nerd and you're like really excited to get test results back. Oh, tell me about it. It, tell me about it. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that you shared your health issues too, because I think a lot of the times, this is why I wanted to interview like regular humans experiencing life because oftentimes you listen to podcasts and I don't know if you feel this way too, but there are some podcasts I listen to and the pr- people are like, my life is so great. These are all the things. This is what I did to achieve it. Everything's awesome. And I'm like, mm, they're withholding truth. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely feel that a lot. 
Yeah. It's so important. Like we're all just humans trying to figure ourselves out. And I think that can also be discouraging. Like you said, Kristen, like you've learned all these things you want to help others. And you're like, well, I can't help others because I don't have it all figured out. None of us do. <laughs> like We just don't, we just don't. Okay. So what's next for you? You're going to be doing that Dutch and you decided that NP thyroid probably isn't the best choice. Where are you at with your keto diet now? And like, how are you supporting yourself through, through this little hiccup in your health? Oh gosh. Okay. Those are lots of good questions. What's next. Obviously I do want to start coaching others. Like I said, I'm still struggling with my own confidence on that, but I'm just gonna, I just got to get it going and, and, you know, get moving. If I can, I'm hoping maybe that some friends around me will let me experiment on them. I think that's the easiest way to kind of jump in and get going as people that you know, and then, then branch out into a bigger audience where I am on the keto diet. I am still keto. I'm not as dogmatic as I used to be. About the only thing I'm dogmatic on now is probably seed oils. And that's a whole other conversation I realize, but I'm not nearly as dogmatic as I used to be as about fruit and carbs and, and eating things like that. I don't fast nearly as much. I've realized that probably right now until I figure things out, that's not a good idea. But I do believe in the keto diet and I do believe it works for many, many things. I just don't feel like I'm as, I don't have hard edges about it anymore. It used to be, this is what you do. You know, you're 20 grams of carbs and you're moderate protein and you're half fat and you know, all the things. And now I'm like, okay, you know, if I want to eat some cantaloupe, I'm going to have some cantaloupe. Um, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> and then when I, the Dutch test, I am going to follow up on that and see what I need to do. I don't want to do the NP thyroid. The doctor actually, she wanted to up my dose on it. She was like, oh, let me just up your dose and see if it worked. And I was like, I've done it for six weeks and I've gained 10 pounds and it gotten worse. I don't want to up the dose. So I just kind of hit pause on that until I get the Dutch test back. And then I'll go from there on what, how I want to pursue that or what I want to do. So I'm really waiting on those results. I also ordered a continuous glucose monitor, which is new for me. I just put it in yesterday. So that's been a lot of fun. So I'm excited to learn too what affects my blood sugar. That's something I've never really followed very closely in the past. So that's new. What else? That's enough, right? <laughs> that is so many things. I know. Yes, totally. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Check your reverse T3. I'd be really interested if you went on NP thyroid, if your reverse T3 like massively increased, that's super fun. And also you can even check your TSH. Like if the TSH just totally tanked after taking it, a lot of medical professionals, like allopathic care practitioners will say that the TH can be like low, low, like super low. My my TSH used to be, I don't know, 0 0.05 or something on thyroid medication. That's actually over medication. So you can kind of ah. look and see whether or not it was something that needed to happen and kind of where you're at with that. But I uh -huh. love that you're doing, I love that you're doing the CGM. At first I thought that that was going to be pointless for myself. Like what could I actually learn from this? And I was like, Alrighty then. <laughs> yep. I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so, I know the funniest thing has been because I can hear it a little bit in my voice. I'm kind of recovering from a cold and I um, am using the, some sugar-free throat drops and they bumped my sugar up and I was like, man, come on, they're sugar-free. But we all know sugar-free doesn't really mean sugar-free sometimes, but it's yeah. what I needed for my throat in the moment. But it was interesting <laughs> to see. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Totally. It's, it's totally changed the game for me. Actually, by wearing a CGM, I learned that I shouldn't be doing a ketogenic diet, at least for this season. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Alrighty then. Okay. Awesome. So it's really cool that you're using a CGM because when you get your Dutch results back, you'll be able to see kind of where your adrenals are at and then how what you eat affects your glucose. And that can be a really good window into your adrenal health. So ooh, I'm excited for you. We'll have to have you Yay! back on when you learn all these things and you have more to share about hormones and adrenals and CGMs. Oh, absolutely. I would love that. I'm excited too. Oh, Kristen, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find you? I know you have an Instagram. I do. Instagram is about the only place right now and it's at keto.kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N. That's my only social media presence at the moment. I'll probably do more when I get the coaching business up and going. But right now, that's that's the best place to find me. That's awesome. Kristen, again, thank you for coming on the show today. It was a blast to get to chat with you. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. I had a great time.
I hope you really enjoyed our time with Kristen. You can check her out on Instagram at Keto Kristen. That's K-R-I-S-T-E-N. Again, thanks for hanging out with us. And we'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. Music for the Keto Diet Podcast provided by Yechi. Follow Jacob on Instagram at Yechi underscore official and on Spotify as Yechi. That's Y-E-C-H-I. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.